Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Great. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't have a gift for you, Leonard. I feel terrible now because they gave me such a nice gift. But I did bring my husband. <laughs> he's really handy around the house. So <laughs> I'll just take him for just a short time. That's okay. <laughs> my name is Lucinda Roy, and currently I teach creative writing. But formerly I served as chair of English and an associate dean in the old College of Arts and Sciences. How many of you remember the old College of Arts and Sciences? <laughs> yeah, hands up. Oh, what enthusiasm. Lane Arm is a colleague and a friend, and I'm honoured to have been invited to say a few words about him. I've been longing to do this for such a long time. <laughs> there are some of us in this room who have been at Virginia Tech long enough to know that serving it during times of tragedy, times of restructuring, and times of innovation and expansion requires an intense Herculean level of dedication. That kind of dedication has been required of Lane Arm, and he's delivered. He was a founding dean during a time of tremendous change. It wasn't simply who moved my cheese, it was who's eaten my bloody cheese. <laughs> Effective deans must dwell inside three verb tenses. They must look forward, be mindful of the past, and be attuned to the present. Their primary role is to harness the excellence of faculty and staff and the promise of students. A good dean is a cheerleader and an advocate, an optimist and a seer, a warrior, and most of all, a lover of learning. Lenam is all those things. But one of the most surprising things of all about Lenam is that in spite of the fact that his field is theoretical particle physics and string theory, which requires him to address the fundamental nature of the universe, he's normal. <laughs> Leynar, no, he is. <laughs> Leynar knows how to communicate across disciplines, and he has one of the best senses of humor of anyone I know on this campus. In 2003, I was invited to give the address to mark the 40-year anniversary of the College of Arts and Sciences. It was the same year that the College of Arts and Sciences disappeared. I tried not to take it personally. <laughs> and it was already on the way out. I reflected upon the fact in that address that many of us were at the time dismayed that the college was in the process of disappearing. Why, even the other day, I said, there was a report of a college sighting in the upper quad. But this has since been refuted by all sane people because the foolish person who reported the sighting claimed that the dean was living in a trailer. <laughs> Let me add that no one could have lived in a trailer with the kind of dignity and aplomb that they <laughs> side was the invincible Lei Nam Chang. The battle was elemental. It was King Kong versus Godzilla, <laughs> Batman versus Superman, Sans versus Rikakis. <laughs> <laughs> but renowned for their skills of invention, soon came up with a new and snazzy name for their new college. The scientists opted for minimalism. In a devil-may-care move, they locked off the word arts and called themselves the College of Science. Not to be undone by this scientific wizardry, those of us on the arts, humanities, and social sciences side of the equation recycled the word arts and added everything we could possibly think of to the college name. Liberal, human, and a shockingly, shockingly daring move, sciences. In the plural, by the way. Lane Arms College is pronounced cos, cos it is. Our college is pronounced class, because we're classier than they are. <laughs> 
But even though our side may have won the nomenclature skirmish, the College of Science Sciences, under Leland's direction, was disarmingly clever, disarmingly charming, disarmingly funny, disarmingly disarming, especially when it came to forays into departmental budgets. <laughs> this separation of the conjoined entities of arts and sciences evolved into a terrifying battle of leadership, wildness, fortitude, and faith. Faculty lines were front lines. There were support staff kidnappings and devious ambushes of non-trailer-like facilities. More than a dozen years ago, marking the inception of the two new colleges, I included these words in my address. Lenar, who has served as the last Dean of Arts and Sciences, and who will become the founding Dean of the new College of Science, has done a heroic job during a particularly stressful time. His grace under pressure has been extraordinary and his passionate commitment to the sciences and the arts has never been in doubt. A college is not simply an administrative structure. It is the hearts and minds and spirits of those who work within it. It is the hope and the energy of the young and the collective experience of the old. It is the way we tell the Commonwealth that we understand what it means to share our greatest common wealth. Even then, a dozen years ago, when the colleges were locked in a fierce, no-holds-barred battle for resources, it was clear that Leilang knew how much potential the College of Science had, and how it could fundamentally alter the academic landscape of Virginia Tech. Leilang, for nearly 40 years, you've served Virginia Tech with dedication, foresight, and a glorious sense of humor. Thank you for being willing to continue to serve in that most demanding role of all as a guide for young minds and a discoverer of truths. Thank you for building upon the intellectual wealth of faculty, the dedication of staff, and the potential students in your college and beyond. You did it. The College of Science will live long and prosper because of you. May that also be your destiny too. Tim Luke, and I also have the privilege of serving the College of uh, Arts and Sciences as the chair of political science for a couple of years, twice, and I am now chair of political science in the College of Political Arts and Human Sciences. Um, and in the spirit of today, which some might regard as 2016's most magical day, and here I don't mean the morning after the breaking of the 52-year long drought of sports championships in Cleveland, <laughs> but rather uh, it's, it's Midsummer's Day. And in terms of Midsummer's Day, as Puck would have it, if we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you will have slumbered here while these visions uh, did appear. And I looked out, I followed Lucinda, and she didn't grab on this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel privileged to, um, to join this College of Science event and in honor of Lenon, an accomplished physicist, a meticulous researcher, an outstanding professor, and the founding dean of the College of Science. Like few others in this room, uh, I feel fortunate to have been a colleague of Lenon's as 
uh, Lucinda has brought up. And one of um, the, some of the best days that I've enjoyed here in the College of Arts and Sciences, where I first met Lainam as a dedicated professor in the chair of the physics department. Um, perhaps because Lainam, as our chief geek, was a magisterial force in theoretical particle physics and stream theory, whose forte is addressing the fundamental nature of the universe and its constituents, a previous wave of senior academic leaders gave Lainan the job of Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences with the special assignment of, as the VT News webpage says, to recast it. <laughs> recast it into what was to become the College of Little Arts and Human Sciences, as well as the College of Science. Events, which I suspect local quantum field theory, uh, must concede exhibits many behaviors in their liberated particles that far exceed those predicted by the standard model. <laughs> Second, like no other in the room, I was privileged to have spent uh, quite a few days, some weeks and months in 2002 and 2003, assisting Lainan sort through the process of, if you will, the deconstruction of the College of Arts and Sciences and the reconstruction of liberal arts and human sciences and science out of what was arts and sciences. Yes, one hears the whispers. Lord, what fools these mortals must be. <laughs> but we figured out, we think, which flavors went where as well as the two colleges were accumulating their respective, shall we say, charges and charms. Um, I learned about Lainam that quite clearly his heart is true as steel. His devotion to his discipline, department, the university, and the fate of more than one college. I, I would like to emphasize that much of what has been said about Lainam and the work that he's done in science can be said of what he did in liberal arts and human sciences and in other colleges and institutes around the campus. New programs, fresh beginnings, remarkable faculty, impressive graduates. I think congratulations on what seemed then to be a mission impossible but actually, in the hands of the chief geek, it turned out very well done. Indeed, as a specialist in theoretical particle physics and string theory, to cite but one minor example, Lainan's uncanny powers as a master of time, matter, and energy served well in recasting the very scant mass and nearly invisible presence of the old College of Arts and Sciences on the upper quad. Yes, it was configured as a double-wide trailer compound, and uh, he has transformed it into a multi-storied edifice, now on the <laughs> North End Center, complete with its own Starbucks, and I must say, superb on-site parking. <laughs> <laughs> the next stage of his academic career may well lead him to patent and commercialize this remarkable knowledge for the good of all humanity, and perhaps for the success of intelligent infrastructure and human-centered communities, <laughs> or resilient Earth systems as destination areas. <laughs> Leon, thank you for your friendship. For many great conversations in the past, which I think will, I hope, become many more great conversations in the future, and for your continuing quest for excellence for your college, the College of Science, our college, the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences, and Virginia Kelly.